New York Times is claiming the reason Vice President Harris may not win over voters is not because of her policies, it's because mm. she's a woman. They're calling gender the defining issue of the election. And a new report reads in part, quote, Democrats believe Harris is facing a deep-rooted strain of sexism that looks different from the attacks of the past. When female leaders were openly questioned on the basis of their gender and described in classic tropes of being either too aggressive or too emotional, and sometimes both. Yeah, I'm sure that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And the New York Times also hitting at men who are not in favor of Harris, writing, quote, in quiet conversation, some female Harris supporters cannot shake the uneasy feeling that men in their lives are struggling to support a woman, especially a black and South Asian woman, even if they don't want to admit it. Look, Harris, I don't think Kamala's overwhelming problem is sexism. I'm surprised that this argument is being brought up eight days out. Mm -hmm. Like, personal victimization? When, uh, when Americans are struggling with affordability in this country, when there's so many issues going on, why would you focus the argument? I almost can understand why she would focus it on Trump, because Democrats think that, that hate wins against him. But, but why would a woman who's supposed to be strong and a leader and all that want to make herself seem like a victim, particularly eight days out, when you've got to prove your strength and your readiness as a former prosecutor? Absolutely. And Lee, you know, they have an idea, or at least governor of Maine does, Janet Mills. She said President Kamala Harris is Ken Harris. If she were a man, a middle-aged man, would you think differently about it? So maybe that's the answer. We'll just start calling her Ken Harris and see if people think differently. Again, not the problem for Kamala Harris. Yeah, she's not going to gain votes from that. And it's pretty wild that you see so many on the left, including the New York Times, writing a post-mortem before the election. I mean, how much <laughs> does that show of their faith of where this election is heading? To Harris's point, we should, they should be talking about substantive issues. And if you really want to go there, I would say that there are more voters who are upset that their party can't even define what a woman is, not mm -hmm. that Kamala Harris is oh, a woman. Oh, yeah. Take well, a bow. Look, I, I mean, don't hide sad. behind this. This is sad, right? And I agree with Harris that it doesn't show strength at all. In fact, it shows just the opposite. I'm a victim. I'm a woman. And people are picking on me. That's what it sounds like to oh. my ears. But can I just tell you some numbers, because I looked some up for this. Women have been running for federal office forever, okay? Who was the first woman to serve in Congress? Jeanette Rankin in 1916. Mm. Hello, this is not new. People are familiar with this. Do you know that over the course of this republic, 200 women have run for president? president? Mm. 200. So don't give me that, oh, the voters just aren't hip enough to understand what's going on. They're not on the page. They're sexist. I don't buy it. Tammy, and Kamala Harris has tried to separate herself from this argument, where Hillary talked about breaking glass ceilings. She mm -hmm. has not done that, probably intentionally so, which is why I find it so interesting. Maybe the New York Times is making the argument for her? Well, she can't make that argument because it was a losing argument even then. But this is a reflection of the training for generations. The training that it's all about identity politics. Everything revolves around gender or race or sex or sexual orientation. That's why the Democratic Party's in the condition it's in right now, because it is literally unreal. They're focusing on the unreal. They can't deal with, I don't think it's an excuse. I think some 25-year-old helping with that op opinion is really thinking that still. That is indoctrination. And when that's your focus, you can't deal with the economy. Nothing is as real as the, as the malignant narcissism of being a victim, that everything's about you. Well, no, Trump understands everything is about the American people. That's the difference. And the Democratic Party will not recover until they get out of this. The transgender argument is the boiling down of this, the ultimate intimacy of identity politics that should be private, that keeps you away from looking at the reality of the world as an individual. That's, that is the cancer of the feminist movement and of the American left and of the left worldwide. We're at a, we're at a turning point. This in the next two weeks, we're gonna we're gonna hopefully smash it. To I, some I just degree. looked at this up in Rutgers because I, I was so surprised to hear that that the number was high. Victoria Clayfin Woodhull in 1872 was the first woman to run for United States president, hmm. and then it goes on from there. Now the number is not as reported by some. I don't see 200, but it's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I found 200 on the web and. It goes back 
hundreds of years. <laughs> yeah, you know, I can't wait to see if we get the long list like Hillary Clinton of all the things we're going to blame for this election, like yeah. Comey, Putin, sexism. Yes. I think we may get that from and Kamala Harris. We'll see if it happens. still she wrote a book on what happened. Still. <laughs> hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.